Hey all here, OS Reviews. When talking about the history of mobile computing, there is no escaping the influence that Palm PDAs have had, and they can be thought of as the ancestors or grandfathers of today's smartphones. So in today's throwback video, we'll be revisiting the Palm Tungsten T. This was a PDA that was released running on Palm OS 5.0 in November 2002. So it's pretty crazy that this thing is already 16 years old. Anyways, this particular model is interesting because it has a slider form factor. In fact, you can actually slide to basically reveal the virtual graffiti area, which uses handwriting recognition for writing out characters, could have been shrunken down to give you a more pocketable form factor for easily taking on the road. Anyways, specifications included 16 megabytes of built-in memory. We had it a TI processor running at 144 megahertz single core of course and we had a built-in microphone as well as a front-facing speaker a dedicated 3.5 millimeter headphone jack always nice to see now this thing was priced at $500 when it was released so very expensive so it's pretty amazing how fast technology advances the screen resolution is 320 by 320 now, this was the first Palm PDA to come with built-in Bluetooth, so you could uh, kind of share information with other Bluetooth-enabled devices more quickly. It also had, again, a front-facing speaker, a telescopic stylus, and these were all new features for a Palm PDA at the time. As a size comparison, here is a modern-day Android smartphone that has a 5.5-inch display. So you can see it's actually taller. Uh, this thing was a lot more pocketable, but it was also thicker as well on the side. Uh, the build quality of the Palm was made out of a fusion between aluminum, metal, and some plastic accents. So actually, the build quality is still quite durable and premium feeling even after all these years. So taking a closer look at the design uh, more closely now, on the back is where we have kind of the Palm logo. We also have the charging connector pin, which is again proprietary. The top features the full-size SD card slot, which you can use to expand the built-in memory, as well as at the aforementioned Wi-Fi SD card if you wanted to have uh, wireless internet browsing. There's the antenna for the Bluetooth and infrared beaming technology. On the side is where you'll find a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a dedicated voice recording recording button next to the integrated microphone and if I use to extend the display XO it automatically wakes up the screen and this is what it looks like on the sides uh, when the slider is all the way revealed. It says tungsten and there's also a reset pin on the back along with Bluetooth version 1.1. So considering this thing has a rechargeable lithium iron battery, it's pretty remarkable that my unit here still holds a charge. I tried charging it actually yesterday and it still seems to be working off the battery right now. The first step is actually calibration. So Palm OS is, again, if you've ever used another Palm uh, device, you should be very much familiar with this process. By default, it's set to San Francisco and uh, July 19, 2001. So let's try going all the way up to 2019 and see if it even goes that far. And indeed it does. So immediately you can hear a little bit of sound, and that's because there's, again, the front-facing speaker, which can be used to play back some music as well. So the fact that it has this in addition to the full SD card slot and the headphone jack means it can still be used as a media player today, which is pretty cool. Um, it says setup is now completed. It's going to try and take us through a tutorial of graffiti. So again, this is a section dedicated for letters. The section is for numbers. So if we want to try it, uh, this is how you use the strokes to recognize uh, letters as you write along. And back in the day, graffiti was supposedly faster for entry than using a keyboard just because it was easier to kind of slide along. This is a visualization of what the uh, machine is actually seeing uh, as I'm writing along here. So if I write it along, this is what it's uh, looking like in real time. And it's translating this into the letters actually with pretty good accuracy, as you can see here. So over here, we can also try some numbers. So let's say one, two, three, it's actually reading this uh, pretty nicely. Um, you can also tap on back there to go back uh, one space. And now there still is an on-screen keyboard, it's just very small and not very finger-friendly because back in the day uh, it was really a stylus input world and it was not until really Apple introduced the first iPhone that devices and mobile devices in particular became super finger friendly. But anyways, you can tap on this very small icon to bring up a virtual keyboard and you can tell just really how small it is. Your thumb kind of obscures an entire portion of the screen, but it is there if you want to use to use it to pick out something really quickly. And you can also choose between symbols and an international keyboard as well. 
All right, so initial impressions would be this is a pretty washed out display by 2019 standards. Uh, it is a regular LCD panel, but otherwise Palm OS is very simple and straightforward. So it's a lot more uh, simple and easy to understand than say Windows Mobile was back in the day. So they were really user friendly in the sense that first time users could just pick one up and start using it almost immediately. Uh, so. Palm really doesn't get enough credit for how well their operating systems and UIs in particular are optimized. Anyways, uh, the tungsten here also features some virtual keys. Now, by the way, this entire surface, of course, is using resistive technology, which is why we're using a stylus. It's not capacitive, so it's a plastic screen as opposed to a glass display, which we see on our modern phones. Um, so that's why you need to exert more pressure and use the stylus, or if you use your fingers, you have to press a bit harder on the display. Now, down below, we have a five-way navigation toggle with an OK button along with some quick launch shortcuts that takes us into the calendar as you can see here. Uh, also one that takes us to our contacts, uh, address book, there's also one for a to-do list, and finally one for sketching out some quick notes on a notepad. So let's press on home here and uh, overall the responsiveness is also really good as with all Palm PDAs since it really is so simple it doesn't require a super fast processor for it to run very uh, quickly. Here we can also see a tab on the top right hand corner that we can tap on to sort through our applications by things like games, uh, system, utilities, and uh, different categories that we can define. Even though there's no built-in app store because there isn't built-in Wi-Fi, uh, there is thousands of applications that you can still find today very easily just using Google. You would simply need to install those apps on your computer and then drag it in uh, with a USB cable onto the Palm. So it requires an extra step, but there were a lot of developers making content for this thing, uh, just like there are you know, developers making content for Android today. So again, Beaming is using infrared on the uh, Palm to share information with other Palm PDAs. You could share things like contacts, you could share things like uh, you know small notes back and forth, and it works well enough if you are in a range of roughly, I would say, one feet or less. Uh, and then Bluetooth, of course, works well if you want to connect it to, let's say, wireless speakers, a, a headset, a cell phone, and it works with a larger range of around 10 meters. So you have both options on board here. You can tap on information to take a look at our device. We have 13 megabytes free right now, and this is the space occupied by all the applications here. And under About Applications, it is 2002, running on Palm version 4.5. So this is a very kind of throwback retro device by today's standards. Um, anyways, if we take a look at some of the applications, the calculator is one app, which is really uh, any appointments I have today, as well as check off different tasks that I've completed. So it's a nice way to very quickly get your productivity kind of sorted out when on the go. There's also an expense calculator, which you can document maybe how much you're spending on a trip. And uh, here's the notepad here. So I can create a new note and say, hello, and make some very quick doodles here. So you can tell that it's actually still Again, pretty responsive for just quick drawing and, and whatnot, uh, considering the relatively entry-level processor by today's standard. So the operating system is very well optimized. Let's try deleting this note here. Otherwise, we also have that voice memo functionality, which again was a first because of that built-in microphone. Uh, pretty easy to use interface. And if we do a sample test, hello, this is a test of the microphone voice recording on the Palm Tungsten T. We can tap on stop and it has about an hour's worth of memory uh, with the 16 megabytes. Obviously you can expand that by using an SD card up to four gigabytes, I believe. Let's tap on play. I can also tap on this little button on the graffiti area to add favorites that you can launch and you can set it by default to open up different tasks. And that's pretty much all of the built-in applications. So it's very primitive, uh, especially considering there's no real even settings drawer that we can access to turn on kind of Bluetooth. There's no built-in MP3 player. There's no built-in image viewer, media gallery. All of those are not built in by default onto this Palm version 4.5 slash 5.0. So even though we have all these capabilities like a standard headphone jack, a microphone, and a speaker, if you wanted to expand on these features, you needed to really rely on third-party 
third-party applications, which luckily there were a ton of, really shows you how, how far we've come in terms of mobile computing power and uh, technology. But in some cases, it's also surprising to see how far ahead Palm were back then, such as with this really interesting build quality made out of aluminum that feels sturdy, as well as this slider form factor, which I still think is pretty cool. So anyways, thanks for watching this throwback video here at OS Reviews. That's been a revisited look at the Palm Tungsten T PDA. Tell us in the comments below, have you owned any kind of Palm PDA? Uh, what do you think about this particular form factor? And what do you think holds for mobile computing in the future? Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.